Hi guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today we're going to take a walk around a 102 by 35 plus 5 22GN Big Tex Gooseneck Deckover. A lot of folks will call this a 102 by 40, but again, it is a 40 foot length, but it's 35 foot of flatwood deck, 5 foot full width ramps at the rear, that'll level out and make you a flat 40 foot deck. Let's take a walk around this particular unit. I'll start out real quick at the back. The only option I'm aware of on this particular unit that we've added would be the full width ramps. Uh, very common option. I refer to them as full width ramps. Every manufacturer got their own name. Big Tech is going to call them the mega ramp. Slick setup. A lot of hot shotters historically want a 40. This is it. Used to be years ago, you'd do some straight decks or some uh, flip overs with pop up centers. This has pretty much replaced. Uh, the pop-up center, very few manufacturers offer it. A lot of guys are using this now as well instead of a straight deck. Uh, it just gives you a complete flat deck, still the ability to load equipment as well as your traditional hot shot material. A uh, couple updates on this for 2023 that we'll get to, show you some new standard features. So again, 22GN by Big Tex, 102 by 35 plus 5. This unit's going to weigh in uh, just shy of 8,000 pounds. If you'd allow me to do quick math, we're going to round up. I believe it's actually, I think it's 79.50. They say it weighs, but we'll say 8,000. That's going to give us on a 23.9 GVW, which is what they're tagging this at. We'll round up to 24. 24 minus 8. It's going to give you about 16,000 pound of legal payload. Your actual payload is going to be probably just a touch north of that. So I'm going to call the 16,000 a safe number. And what I mean by you're probably going to get a little more than that. If you ever get DOT inspected on a level two inspection, they're going to weigh your two axles. Uh, two axles can't be over the 10,000 pound uh, mark. And Big Tex is putting 3,900 pound of pin weight uh, on this particular unit. Uh, which is pretty fair. They're counting, uh, again, 3,900 pound of pin weight. That's how you're getting 39, 10, and 10. That's where your 23.9 is coming from. Uh, the reality is your pin weight on this a trailer this length is probably going to be higher than the 3,900. General rule of thumb I use is 1% from your front axle to your coupler. Uh, that front axle is about 25 foot back on the deck, and you got about an 8 foot neck. So that's about 33 foot from the coupler uh, to the front axle. I estimate 1% pin perhaps, per foot, which would be about 33%, 33% on your two 10K axles, which would be 20,000. Pin weight could go as high as 6,600, uh, depending on how this is loaded. 6,600 would be pretty heavy. I'm gonna say the reality is you're gonna be somewhere between the 39 number that's a conservative, already built-in tongue weight amount, and the 66, which is potential max reality, what somebody might have depending on the load. So 16,000 should be a safe number, conservative number on this particular unit as far as what you can legally payload. So moving on to the rest of the features of the trailer. Uh, up front, Big Tex does a square coupler. They're going to be a 30,000 pound rated instead of your traditional round, which would be 25. Uh, it does have your uh, typical spring latch coupler. So basically, uh, it's kind of cold here today, but it still functions and springs. As you would lower that down, it's going to spring open and uh, then back close. You've got one set bolt on this instead of the traditional two. And the reason for that, typically you would have a pin that's going to go through right about here if you've ever had a gooseneck before. This actually has a top adjustment, which is pretty slick. You've got an infinite adjustment, just like a A-frame jack handle. So you can take little bites, uh, you know, in a sixteenth of an inch versus a traditional gooseneck. You're taking four-inch clips. So every time you would pull the pin and lower it, it's going to come down four inches. So you've got your, basically your set up top via your, your jack, and then you've got your set bolt safety. This needs tightened down. If there's ever a sticker, normally it's going to say about 35, 40 foot pound of torque. Most guys just tighten them with a crescent wrench. This is important so that your neck isn't in there wobbling around because eventually it would, uh, it would egg shape uh, a pin, which again, in this, there is no pin uh, for it. But uh, moving on to the breakaway switch, instead of your traditional this has the newer style fast way. Basically, it's got spring tension on it instead of uh, the typical cable that's going to have your slack in it. So, nice setup. Of course, your safety chains. This has a blue harness. It's a cold weather rated harness. 
uh, stays flexible down to negative 65 degrees. Uh, one of the details I like, probably even more so than the, than the uh, cold weather, which is nice, on the end of the plug, I don't know if you can see it there, but I'll try to make it, you can actually, it color codes the position. So instead of having to poke and probe and find the position, unfortunately in a trailer industry, if you're not familiar, there is no standardized wiring colors. There are to a degree, but every everybody has their own colors. This actually shows you at the end of the plug, the color and the location, which is nice. Uh, a lot of manufacturers historically have not done that. So that's a nice feature. Uh, the main beam on this is a 12 inch I beam. And then it continues 12 inch I beam on your vertical and your horizontal on the neck. Uh, trailer is powder coated. It's got neck doublers or neck gussets as some would call it going from the vertical to the horizontal and then from the vertical out to the side rail. Gives some extra strength to the neck and out to the side rail. Some manufacturers will skip those doublers or they'll just do the front one, not this one. And in lieu of these outer ones, sometimes they'll just put a piece of channel or two in the back of the neck. This is actually tube, which if you're familiar with tube, tube doesn't twist and flex quite as much as channel or a lot of manufacturers on those are gonna use form channel, which is even lighter. Uh, but these are made out of tube. And then again, you've got your doublers or neck gussets on top of that. Uh, going back up front here, one of the things that I really like, uh, it just sounds like a little detail until you mess with these in the shop or help prep them, or in my case, doing a lot of videos and that. Uh, this right here, this fabricated part, super slick. A lot of manufacturers have a little piece of, uh, just a piece of flat that you can adjust in and out, but it just seems like they never fit right. You're always kind of messing with them super simple just a little couple dollar part that just i, I just like it it's so much nicer than most of the ones i deal with uh grease dirt uh for extra serviceability of course you got your grease dirts on the jack these jacks are bolt on so if you ever damage one or for whatever reason need to take them off easy to do so or if you damage this one and want to weld one on no problem you can unbolt this one off if you've never had a spring-loaded jack before turn your head uh, away it will kick any stones up down there so basically you're going to pull that handle it's going to lift up in and retract pretty simple setup uh, like most trailers nowadays this does have your sealed beam led lights it's got lots of tie downs you've got your traditional rub rail stake pocket chain or pipe spool depending on where you're from and what you call it stake pockets are roughly two foot centers chain spool in between so you got tie down points roughly every one foot uh, this is your heavier quarter inch rub rail too. Sometimes you'll see three eighth. Side steps on both sides are standard equipment. One of the newer features that I wanted to point out to you uh, are the sliding ratchet track is now standard equipment. So if you look, you can take, put ratchets, have four inch ratchet track all down the trailer. I'll point out as well for hot shotters, a uh, lot of different things in the industry as far as your side rail. Some will use, uh, some of your cheaper ones are gonna use flat. I've seen angle iron used. Uh, the most common probably is gonna be channel still. Uh, channel's very common. The reason a lot of guys like it, especially for a trail like this, it's probably gonna see some road miles. You can clean the inside of it so it's not gonna rot from the inside out like tube is. Tube will give a lot of strength like channel to the side rail. Problem with tube is uh, we've gotten some trade-ins or looked at some trade-ins over the years where the side rail literally is just rotten and there ain't much you can do besides a big project at that point in time. So you've got a six inch channel side rail, point that out because sometimes as well, you'll see guys use a five inch channel uh, on the side rail of the trailer. You do have, again, your side step both sides. You've also got a handle with your step, makes it super easy for getting up front. Uh, there is a, re a retainer up front. So if you ever replace the deck down the road, makes it super easy to do so uh if you see the top of the i-beam here top of your mainframe that is a pierce frame design if somebody asks you if you want a pierce beam trailer or not this is what they're going to refer to and it is exactly what it says it is you are piercing the beam on this as opposed to the other option if you don't see this beam or tread plate over the wheel wells Typically, your cross members are going to sit perpendicular on top of the I-beam and then your wood on top of that. So a pierce beam is going to lower you down about four inches. 
Most guys will prefer Pierce frame because they want to be as low to the ground as they can. It gives you a lower center of gravity, makes it a lot easier for loading equipment. Some folks say it's only four inches, but it does make a difference. The only guys that generally don't like Pierce beam would be if it's a non-Pierce beam, it's going to sit up four inches higher. You've got three inch channel and then you've got your wood on top of that where this wood sits pretty well about flush to the top of the beam. So the only benefit to being higher would be if you're a off-roader, if you're a farmer or something similar to that, where you want that extra ground clearance at the back. Uh, we also have other brands that do non-pierce beam, and those brands generally charge about $1,000 for that option. For guys that don't want that option, I'm not aware of it even being available from Big Techs without everyone has it. But we have other brands in stock if you, for whatever reason, want the taller 36-inch deck height non-pierced. Uh, again, this is the 32 lower frame. The non-pierced is going to sit 36. Your beaver tail is going to take out about half the height, and your ramp is going to do the other half roughly. So on a higher deck height of 4 inches, you're going to pick up maybe 2 inches of ground clearance at the rear. So again, this is a pierce beam design. I want to show you underneath what that means. And while I'm going there, I'll show you there's a mid marker, which isn't always standard equipment. So pierce beam, you can see right at the cross member, you see that tiny little bit of daylight. Uh, that cross member is running through the I-beam instead of sitting on top. And then roughly every four foot, you'll notice the gusset. Um, also, if you see that big pipe running down the center, that is a torque tube. Torque tube is designed as well for your off-road application. You go off-road, it's gonna keep that trailer from racking and twisting. So you've got the big beam going down the center. You'll notice about every fourth cross member, you've got uh, a gusset tying it in, welding it um, to the frame itself. That's gonna stop right about the center of your axles. So I'm down underneath the trailer. I want to point out another big difference uh, on the Big Techs because this does have HDSS suspension standard. And what that is, it's an adjustable trailing suspension. It's much heavier than a normal suspension. It's 100,000 pound tensile strength steel instead of standard mild steel. It's also got adjustable uh, suspension capability to it. I'll show you where the adjustment is. But this is a mini version of a uh, Hutch 9700 truck style suspension. It's got a heavy three leaf over there across the way you can see again the hangers way heavier the steel is also uh, a lot heavier so here is your center slipper again much different than a normal slipper if you're familiar with trailers and then you've got your adjuster right there so it does make the adjust uh, the suspension uh, adjustable and then you can get an idea of the heavier three leaf so some say, why would an adjustable suspension be, uh, you know, why would I need that? And the answer would be, if your trailer ever doesn't track perfect, you've got the adjustment right there to make it track perfect. 48 inch spread axle, they give you the torque settings right by your wheels. Dexter brand axle, it's got old bath hubs. It's got a load range E10 ply radial tire, 235 ADR 16. It's got a black wheel. Again, this is the lowest possible deck height. It's 32 inches. One of the things you'll generally also see with a pierce beam would be the tread plate over the wheel wells, and that's just to get you down as low as you can. And then also they uh, channel out the side rail and reinforce. You also notice mud flaps are standard equipment, which is nice. So you've got the ratchet track basically all the way from the side step to the front of the front axle you've also got a piece about five foot or so long behind the axle you've got a rub rail in the back beaver tail so these are the full width ramps they are heavy if they weren't spring assisted but these actually have about double the normal springs on them so they actually aren't that bad i've got one in the down position so you can see how it levels out to a flat 40 foot deck 35 foot of wood five foot of tail i've also got the other one in the up position now i can only assume and i've never had a conversation with the engineer but these ramps are the way they are on that angle not because somebody screwed up they're on that angle i'm assuming so that you can see those lights 
behind you. Some manufacturers actually do not let ramps stand up because of visibility. And those manufacturers generally put the ramp straight up. This angle they put it on actually makes it nice because you can see the ramp, I'm sorry, see the light. Uh, I'm at a distance way closer than any car should probably be, uh, you know, following. And I can see those bottom lights just fine. The benefit of this being in the up position is you've got 40 foot trailer. Let's just say a guy wanted to haul a uh, short bed truck, long bed truck, and it's 38 foot. This trailer, you should be able to do that. Okay, so you're gonna, instead of just having 35 foot, you're gonna gain some additional length back here out of the five foot tail. I'm gonna guess, depending on what you're hauling, you're gonna pick up two, three, four foot. So, let me put the ramp down with one hand. I'll show you. Some folks ask, how heavy is this? And the answer is, it's not actually that bad with the springs on. If you're a shop guy's doing this without springs already assembled, yes, they can be heavy. But to a customer, I've got this with one hand and I didn't even hardly touch that ramp. <clears throat> but it is pretty manageable would be the best way I could put it. Uh, my son's 12 years old. He's handled these ramps before. Not... Uh, not too bad. So again, this is a 48 inch spread axle. Your mud flaps, you've got your reflector tape going down the sides. It's a 12 inch I-beam frame. You've got your torque tube for extra rigidity. It's a 16 inch on center structural channel cross member. These are not formed steel. Again, weighs in about 8,000 pounds. You can get this in different lengths. You can get a 30 plus five, a 25 plus five, shown here the 35 five. This is 10K axles. We also stock these with 12K axles and they're available with 15,000 pound axles as well. We do stock quite a few different trailers. If this isn't the right one for you, give us a look. We stock currently about 1,300 units of inventory, including our used. Uh, you can check us out at www.bestchoicetrailers.com or you can visit us on the web. I'm sorry, you can give us a shout at 717 220 4220. Thanks for looking.